So a lot of times in my videos, I talk about trying to have as little friction as possible because I make videos so often, having to tweak things in my videos just to get them to where I want them to be constantly is sometimes a little bit of a drag. So if I can just reduce the friction to making videos, then that'll really help me in the long run. So one way that I've done that recently is by getting a couple of lenses that I think are gonna work really well for me. Now I've used so many different lenses in the Micro Four Thirds system, but I really wanted to get a couple of lenses that had a really consistent look. So as some of you know, I use the Sigma 16 millimeter for Micro Four Thirds, which is what I'm shooting on right now, but I wanted to pick up a complementary lens to this Sigma 16 millimeter that would be a little bit tighter than I could use for more portrait style shots. So I picked up this little lens. This is the Sigma 30 millimeter F 1.4. And this is also in the contemporary lineup of lenses that Sigma has for Micro Four Thirds, Sony E and Canon M. And I think pretty recently Fuji X as well. So no matter what crop sensor camera you have, you can get one of these little Sigma contemporary lenses. And I think they even make them for the L mount, but you have to use your L mount camera in crop mode. So this 30 millimeter will give me about a 60 millimeter equivalent field of view if you're thinking full frame terms. I kind of just think of this as my 50 millimeter. Even though it's a bit tighter, I try to think of my 60 millimeter as my 35 and this 30 millimeter as my 50. So because I have a bunch of focus gears lying around, I slapped one of these Tilta focus gears on them and I put one of my Luzid Brass 52 to 77 millimeter step up rings on this lens just so I can use all my 77 millimeter filters. So I feel like too often in the past, I've really only used pretty wide or you know medium wide lenses like my DJI 15 or the Sigma 16 or even 12 millimeters on my Olympus 12 to 40. But sometimes having a nice portrait focal length with a really nice bright aperture of f1.4 is a really nice tool to have. And I've actually used this on a few of my YouTube videos already, and it just gives a very nice and clean look. The real reason that I got this lens is because it's gonna look basically exactly the same as my 16 millimeter. So all the colors and contrast are gonna look essentially the same on this 30 millimeter as they do on my 16. And that's one frustration that you might find yourself in if you're using a bunch of different lenses from different manufacturers is that they're all gonna render contrast and color a little bit differently. So a seven artisans 35 millimeter F1.4 is gonna look different than this 30 millimeter F1.4 or the DJI 15 millimeter gives me different colors and contrast than this Sigma 16 millimeter does. Now it's not to say that one is better than the other, but having consistent looking lenses that aren't gonna take a lot of tweaking to match in post is gonna save you a lot of time in the long run. So before we go any further, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people. Whether it's photography, cinematography, color grading, video editing, Skillshare has thousands of inspiring classes that'll help you gain more knowledge in whatever subject you're interested in. One Skillshare class that I took recently is Color Grading, Introduction with a Pro Colorist by Fred Trevino. What I love about this class is that Fred doesn't just show you what buttons to push within a software, but actually how colorists view an image and manipulate it to enhance the story. I learned a lot from Fred and I think this is a great class to take if you want your color grading to get to the next level. The really cool thing is that the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below are gonna get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So definitely, again, don't sleep on that. Click that link and get yourself a one month free trial. Once again, big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So something that I do like about these Sigma Primes is that no matter what camera system you use them on, as long as your camera has good autofocus, the autofocus on these Sigma Primes works really, really well. So right now I'm on the 16, and as I travel backwards, it's gonna keep my face in focus with the face detect autofocus. And now I'm on the 30 millimeter. And even at f1.4, the face detection autofocus on this camera and lens combo works perfectly. So if you have an M50 or an A6400 or like one of the Fuji cameras with autofocus, these lenses are gonna work out great. And since I have you here, if you haven't yet, you should check out my podcast. I started a few months ago, have about 10 episodes up, and I talk about filmmaking and YouTube. So if you haven't yet, check it out. It'll be in the description below. So 
So as far as size, this is just slightly smaller than the 16 millimeter. And it actually feels really good in the hand and it's got a little bit of weight to it. It is a focus by wire lens, just like the 16 millimeter is. But I found that when I'm manual focusing on my EM1 Mark II, I think that it's it can work totally fine. I don't do a lot of rack focuses. And when I do, I usually just use the touch screen and just do a digital rack focus because with the EM1 Mark II, it actually works fairly well. And these are just really nicely weighted on a camera like the EM1 Mark II. So even though in this video I'm talking about the Sigma 30 millimeter, I think that it actually is pretty convenient to have a set of lenses that you can really rely on and you'll know that they're going to give you a consistent looking image. So maybe having like a set of the Leica primes for your micro four thirds, or if you're shooting Canon or Sony, just getting lenses that are by the same manufacturers that are going to give you a similar looking image with lenses that have a consistent look. It's going to actually take away a lot of the tweaking that you're going to have to do in post. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, it'd be really cool if you hit the like button. And if you'd like to watch some more of my videos, you can click on either side of my face. Once again, thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you all next time. Later.